Hello everyone, it is the Red Men Originals podcast um, on a Wednesday rather than a Monday um, because Steve refused to listen to me uh, and booked it on a Wednesday. Uh, Steve, who is currently um, working from home, um, so good on him. Um, but no, we, we couldn't go a week without getting those guys around uh, the little coffee table here and having a chat about the Reds, particularly because we're about to enter into a massive period of season. This is it. The business end. We can finally say it. We're at the business end of the season. It's a title race. It is. The Ten t- games to go. That's mm. it. We've, we've reached the starters blocks. Um, so, yeah, across both podcasts today, we're going to be discussing that. Obviously, Liverpool-centric there on the Redmen Originals podcast. And then over on the Bias Football Pod, over on um, redmenplus.com, we're going to be delving into City and Arsenal. And we're going to have a, a chat about the... Uh, the Nike England kit thing because I've just been I've been fuming about it and not in the way that social media has been fuming about it but I've been fuming about it so I thought it was worth us having a little natter around that before everyone moves on and forgets it was ever a thing um, before we crack in, crack in with all that stuff a couple of things first of all I want to thank everyone uh, who turned out in both Belfast and Dublin uh, to see us live on Sunday and Monday um, to sell out shows on, on in other on another island um, was wild, wild beyond comprehension. Um, I'm going to show you a little clip. Uh, I've got a vlog coming out, so this is there's a little hint at that. Absolutely outrageous, outrageously good. Get on this. Um, good to see you, Steve. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, Steve, Steve pushed through with laryngitis. Uh, he, he's been an absolute hero for us in the last few days. Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Boss, uh, yeah, at some point over the next couple of days, when I've got a chance, I'm going to be putting the blog uh, blog together from that trip. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. It's been a busy week um, for you two. Mm. So, basically, since I've seen you last, um, Chloe, you interviewed Diogo Jota. How was that? Life peaked. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure it can get any better. Um, yeah, it was boss. Uh, he came in and he was dead relaxed, really enjoyed it. Um, and to whoever took the photos, I can't thank you enough because hmm. um, I'm not, I, I always think that photos are going to come out horrific, uh, but I absolutely loved them as well. Um, so, yeah, it was a moment that I'll most definitely cherish. Amazing. Um, and Dan as well. Dan's I mean, interviewed everyone, not just one, <laughs> he's interviewed the entire world. You name him, I spoke to him. Yeah, I mean, let's go. I mean, the ones I know about. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you mm. you both went and covered the Robbie Fowler yeah. mural. mural. Yeah, life peak there for me, by the way, being markedly older yeah. than Chloe. <laughs> Generationally wise, my life peak speaking to Robbie Fowler. What a man. And by the way, just on that, actually, like the people might have seen the video on our YouTube, but he was just made up to be there yes. all day. Like, he was just in his element. The mural, it meant so much to him. It was boss, it really was. Yeah. And then you just went to watch the Pool Legends. We did, we did, yeah, and we were fortunate enough to speak to you. you might have to help me out with Chloe. Daniel Aga. Danny Aga, yeah, that was all you, yeah, that you cared about that. Yeah, I yeah. was, Dan, Danny, Danny, <laughs> come on, lad. Um, Igor Bishkan, boss. Yeah, lovely. Uh, yeah, Ryan Babel, likewise. Chris, Chris Kirkland, Kirkland's Aldo. Um, to speak to him. Nearly Fernando Torres. Nearly um, Fernando Torres. It was just yeah. boss, it was, it was just boss. Somebody else I'm missing there, I'm sure. But yeah, it was amazing, yeah. I spoke to Gregory Vignell since that as well, mm-hmm. uh, and just spoke to Jeff Shreve as well, which was interesting. It's been busy, it's been yeah. good though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spoke to every person in the Republic of Ireland <laughs> and in Northern Ireland over two days, I reckon. Yes, yes, pretty much, yeah. yeah. I had a beer with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had a beer off every individual person, <laughs> judging by your uh, cartwheel attempts by the time we got to Dublin. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, check our socials and take uh, Dave LFC chats, uh, Twitter accounts as well. Uh, good time, had by all. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, genuinely, I, I, I was going to individually praise you, but let's just do it in a more embarrassing forum online. Um, I was very proud of you two this week. Very, very proud yeah. that we, I, you know, you just did all that amazing stuff and I wasn't involved, which is a, 
Incredible. Incredible thing. And we had a lot of like, where's Dan? Where's Chloe? Shouts when we were awake, <laughs> which is quite offensive because, you know, we were we were right in front of them at the time. <laughs> Are we not enough for you? The answer was no. Um, okay. Sounds. Uh, thank you so much again. Yeah, to everyone who turned out. Mind blown. Uh, yeah. And the idea, Chris, that there's more people coming to see us in Liverpool at the end of the season than both of those we will combined. be there me we and will Dan these guys will be there will they be have there. to be there for that one um, <laughs> yeah they're working the door um, <laughs> <laughs> it was something else like it was proper humbling wasn't it going over there and, and just I guess pretty much when we arrived in Dublin some fella shouted out of his van at us when we were crossing the road like and it, it was like get in red man or something <laughs> like that as soon as we'd arrived and then it just carried on didn't it it was amazing like it was funny because we went we, we asked our taxi driver for a recommendation where we could have a beer and maybe a game of pool when we got into Dublin he's like there's a place down there called Murray he's like sound okay we checked in um, put our bags in so we couldn't check in walk down there and it turns out it was the same gaff that we did a lot that our last live show in Ireland in six years before it was insane like but we were in a different room and stuff so it was hard for us to notice so yeah and it, the whole weekend was just absolutely brilliant um, yeah apart from we had a 10 minute spell 10 to 15 minute spell in Belfast where all the audio broke mm -hmm. and we just got on done the big introductions and everything and then all the audio was dead so I had to I had to sing to the crowds with no microphone for 10 minutes to keep it going which I wasn't 100% prepared for but we got through so it yeah was it was brilliant. just after I failed to do my first one on the cartwheel that wasn't it it was yeah did you succeed in any over the weekend? No. You, no none out of three. three. None out of three. Sounds, yeah. It's going going. Well. Yeah, it's going well. Anyway, um, speaking of uh, taking stock, uh, let's talk about Liverpool's season so far. Um, Dan, I'll start with you. Um, I just haven't had a couple of weeks to sort of reflect on things. I think the annoyance of the Man United game... Um, has faded significantly to be honest I think seeing the response from their fan base of I've seen some of them calling it like the greatest game of their lives and all this kind of thing and I get it you know winning late in, you know in extra time against your most bitter arrivals who are better than you at football would, would have that impact certainly I remember the 90s and noughties when we beat them and they, those games mm. felt massive um, but it's helped me to chill a bit and I think you know it's annoying not having an opportunity to win a quadruple certainly but I've been able to look at it and go, I, I, I had no expectations of Liverpool being even remotely this good this season. So to actually be here, as I said at the start of the show, we're, we're at the starters blocks now mm. for the title race. And that was, that was beyond, my, beyond my dreams for us to be even at this point. So yeah, big end to the season. Yeah, I, I'm able to have a similar sort of conversation with myself by this point. Don't get me wrong, I'd be lying if I sat here and said I wasn't just starting to really believe that the quadruple was a, was a tangible thing that could happen because I was. I think the more we got deeper into the season, the more we battled against adversity and found ways to win games and just how brilliant we are. We just started to think, I tell you what, this could actually happen. Then the European draws happen. You go, oh, this is this is well on here all of a sudden. So to lose in the manner that we did, and we obviously we broke down the United game in detail in the immediate aftermath, but the fact that we were so in control of it, I'm going to annoy myself even talking about it now, but it felt like we could have put them to the sword and we could have killed off in the second half. We didn't, so it, it is still, it does still stick in my craw a little bit. But having said all of that, you're absolutely spot on like if you'd have offered me if you'd have said to me back in August you're going to be sat here back end of March and you can still win a treble you know you're 10 games away potentially from winning the Premier League you're about to embark on this epic title race the Europa League still a very real possibility I'd have bitten your hand off because ultimately if you think back now maybe I came into the season given how far off we were last year came in thinking let's just have a smooth sailing ride to top four, maybe a cup run in that, and let's see what happens to the Europa League because you always kind of fancy us in that. I'd have been absolutely made up. So to see where we are and see what is possible is incredible. And obviously there's the romantic of, of Klopp leaving all that sort of stuff. There's so many factors at play. Yeah, let's go and do it. And it's strap yourself in time, isn't it, ultimately? I mean, I, Dan touched upon it there, Chloe. Considering just how we, we were rubbish last season. We were rubbish and it felt like it was all sort of coming to an end. And now, look, we'd had another another season that was a bit crap, an injury hit or whatever under Klopp and then bounced back. But obviously having to ha go so big in the transfer market and actually suffer a couple of little setbacks as well, you know, a couple of transfers that maybe weren't totally under Liverpool's, you know, un under Liverpool's, I guess, broader plan of what they were hoping to achieve. The Caicedo thing that was tuck tucked in amongst mm. there, the Lavia thing that was tucked in amongst there, and then yeah, to be to be kind of this good, and as well actually, not even to mention the amount of like 
drama we overcame in the first 10 games of the season like Liverpool had five red cards this season that's like you know, Arsenal have had two I think you know like that's it's un- it's unreal genuinely unreal that would you yeah it is and I think that's why I'm a little bit relaxed because I just never expected us to get mm. here um, and it's also a case of we know Klopp's now going so I've got to enjoy absolutely every second of it yeah. um, and that's really what I'm here to do I'm here to support the lads get behind them because now now is when if you come to Anfield Anfield's going to be a light because we know there's something at stake we know there's something to fight for we know that the days are, t- are twindling down for, for Jürgen Klopp at Anfield um, so we're going to go even bigger for the players and the manager and yeah I, I would never have guessed that either being here I had hopes of potentially, potentially challenging but never did I think we could get close to Arsenal or City with the entire midfield rebuild that we've had to do um, and on top of all of this adversity you know having a goal <laughs> ruled offside in a game that was massive for us at the time um, it's it's the fact that we've had massive injuries mm. all along this season and yet big players have stepped up and been heroes you know you've had Trent being uh, grabbing us from the death at Fulham and, and getting us over the line you've had Wataru Endo who's been out on his legs at Chelsea you've had the young kids stand up yeah. and prove um, that they can be world stars you've had Connor Bradley who's just decided to come out of nowhere and say I, uh, I'm unreal um, so I'm just enjoying it I'm, I'm loving every moment on it and to be honest that United game I, I needed an international break after that. Uh, yes. I felt like I really did need time away from the football and I've had that and I can't wait for the Reds to be back but ultimately the the thing for me is is us being in uh, not being in another competition might help us. I'm yeah. trying to see the positives. Yeah. That results. Make sure you use that for the next time you go. You go there in a week and a half. Go and make sure you use that. Like. I don't even deflation yeah. you use it as motivation to go again you cannot be complacent at Old Trafford uh, and it's much more important that we win the game in the league than we did in the FA Cup so for me I'm seeing all of this as learning curves and hopefully looking at the positives that we can take from them instead of the negatives yeah I, I think that, I think that's right and there's definitely no one likes to lose at Old Trafford Chris and it's it had the, the, the potential to really sort of pop a pin in, in what we were doing but I remember at the time thinking about like, well, there are definitely positives to take from it. There are there's positives to take from every situation, but it is how Liverpool move on next. We discussed this post match, like we've lost the chance to take, you know, Liverpool to Wembley at the, for the last game of the season. Effectively, we've lost the chance to extend Jurgen Klopp's time as Liverpool manager, and that's devastating. You know, that is utterly devastating. That's like having you know the last twenty quid in your in your in your pocket, and you you slip and you drop a few down the grid you can't get to it well we're going to have to shrug and, and crack on with what we've got and that's what that's what hopefully I can close right now is that everyone's got that motivation to say there's like what a maximum of I think 15 games left in the season mm. um, yeah let's just go and absolutely enjoy every one of them you have to empty the tank don't you you have to do everything you can to get over the line in all you know in the other two competitions now in the Premier League and the Europa and uh, just to go back on what Klopp, uh, Klabby was saying before, is it's a teachable moment there for Klopp. Yeah. You know, you've got to point at uh, how you felt against Chelsea and you've got to remember that and you've got to remember how bad you felt at United because that's probably the first time this season where I'm looking at it going, you know what, we were their better side against Manchester United, but there's nobody else to blame but ourselves that we didn't win that game. With the other ones and stuff, there's always, there's always been something, you know, the goal incorrectly being ruled offside and whatever. As a squad, this felt like the first proper defeat that they've almost had. Yeah. And, you know, it's the first time that they're going out of a competition this season. And, you know, we've got to make sure that we go the whole way in the Europa League and we don't take anybody for granted. You know, we do have the easier side of the draw, but everyone's got to be up for it each and every single week now. And you know, hopefully with a few lads coming back, that'll bolster the ranks. But, you know, we, we're battle-hardened. Like the, the young lads, Chloe mentioned it, Dan mentioned it, the young kids that have come in and been able to win us a trophy and, and, and put their name into Liverpool for folklore and sort of history is, is incredible but now you've got to go and do better yeah. now there's bigger fish to fry and we've got to go and you know hopefully you know we've got a big game against Brighton at the weekend it's going to be a tough place to go we'll talk about it later of course but we've got to set the market down for this stage of the season early that's what we've got to do now and then take that momentum and just keep it rolling and keep building on it each and every single week well, what I would say is the the only other defeat where I've I've felt horrific for it was was Arsenal but Arsenal Arsenal was, it's just one of those days. You can have an off day. We've been absolutely su- superb for half of the season here. Manchester United was different because Manchester United, it looked like a team who just thought, 
we're much better than this. So we don't need that third goal. Yeah. And it was complacency to me. It was the feeling of we just thought we were the, the better side and at some point mm. we'd get that third goal. We didn't have the killer instinct. Where with Arsenal, it was just an off and game. That's why it's a teachable moment. Exactly. The scoreline didn't reflect the manner of the game at that point. Yeah. We had them at arm's length just toying with them, thinking it was two or three yeah. goals clear, but it never was. You're right. and, and Arsenal just played us off the park and sometimes that can happen. Sometimes you can have a bad game. You can excuse that at times. Um, so yeah, it, it felt a little bit different, but all Ultimately, uh, you've got to use them the, all of that as, as learning curves because, like you said now, it's 10 games left to go. It's 10 games of Jurgen Klopp in the Premier League left. Go and win it for him. Go and win it for yourself. Go and create history. Write your name in Liverpool history. I think we get lost in the, in the, the moment to moment of it all sometimes, you know, and the emotions of it all. And Manchester United exacerbates that. And it was funny, it was one of the central points of. of being over in Belfast and Dublin and I think people feel that more acutely in, in other in other places sometimes people from down in London often feel it because you've just got more Man United fans actually in your day to day in your face and whatever so it can feel more on top mm. um, whether that can be a little bit more laissez fair about it, as much as it actually spiritually hurts me because I just think there's just such a deep rooted antipathy between Liverpool and Manchester in the general northwestern sense but it's um, yeah it, it is that the sort of context of it all really and how Liverpool you know bounce on and how we pick ourselves up mm. and to your, to your point I think kind of Chloe is that like Liverpool have only lost two games in the league this season like you used to be able to lose five or uh, five, uh, like five was it was like don't lose more than five if you don't lose more than five you've probably won the league and now Liverpool have lost league titles haven't lost one game in a season you know what I mean it's it's insane so I know, I don't know obviously the United game is a cup game which is right to say it's, it's disconnected from this but actually we put all this thing on like a quadruple a quadruple a quadruple I've said this before I just want to see Liverpool be good and we've been really good this season we've managed to pick up a trophy along the way We, if we carry on being this good I'd be astounded if we didn't come home with at least another trophy at the end of the season the league is the league and that what, we, what I'm saying there is that it's almost impossible to win the Premier League these days you know City are on are, are on to become the first team to ever win it on four in four consecutive seasons and we know why they they've got a platform to be able to do that you know there's a there's 115 reasons why they're in these kind of sort of situations um the only team that stopped them before has been us and Arsenal pretty well placed and I'm, I'm really looking forward to diving into both of those teams but yeah we forget sometimes that one defeat isn't the end of the world but we've been trained to feel like one defeat is the end of the world whereas yeah I'm, I'm pleased that everyone seems to be quite like say fair about the whole thing because it, it's not to tell people how to feel but it, you should feel that way really in this regard Liverpool have been have been mustered so far um, I want to talk about some of the individuals then Um I want to know who you think are the players who've really risen to the challenge so far this season, and this can be from a number of a number of different angles. The obvious one, I will do him and get him out the way almost because we've done a lot of Virgil Van Dijk chat in recent weeks, and rightly so because obviously look, he's won as a piece of silverware already. I think he's been almost flawless as a captain um, for us, but I think he's almost like leading from the front you know we talked about like Jordan Henderson being very much that kind of like uh, inspirational in so much as he's a guy who's going to hurt more than anyone else he's going to shout more than anyone else he's going to run more than anyone else you know he, he maybe I don't like this whole like natural football and talent whatever phenomenal footballer let's not let's not mistake that um, but Van Dijk is a is an all time great of the game and waiting and to have that but also to be able to elevate yourself because you've been given the captaincy of a football club, I think is is almost set the tone, Chris, for everyone else to follow in a way that I'm maybe I should maybe it was a bit stupid of me to not expect that, but yeah. No, I think that there was not many people that I thought that he that I met, sorry, that thought he was going to be a fantastic captain. You know, maybe that's that, that's on us mm -hmm. because you you get a sense of who they're going to be and stuff like that. And he's changed, you know, everyone's opinion pretty much because of the way that he's gone about it. You know, the the leadership that he's shown, not just with the ball at his at his feet, but you know, it's a simple thing. But before the game, getting everyone together and changing the way that he's doing, putting his own mm -hmm. stamp on things. And you know, you told us a, a while ago that you did from inside the club that Van Dijk wanted to play in all the in all the games in all the competitions. And you had a theory around the. It was a Carabao semi-final where it's like, no, I'm the captain. It's a semi-final. I want to play in this game and stuff like that. So that's the type of leadership you want at a football club, isn't it? And on, on top of that, he's playing the best he's ever played as well. And, you know, it's a it, it's a rolling cast of characters next to him. Yeah. So, but throughout it all, Virgil van Dijk has been 
Imperious. Yeah. Any other shouts? There's a lot of rising, shouts to be honest. Rising, yeah. rising to the challenge is this really more than anything? Yeah, yeah. I think Matalo oh, Endo falls into that category. Yeah, he's been absolutely exceptional. Certainly when you when yeah. you come from a place of being a little bit underestimated um, and not really appreciated as a signing. And listen, you mentioned it earlier on. Obviously, went from the world of potentially signing Moises Caicedo for in excess of 110 million, and you you suddenly remove yourself from that, and it's Matara Endo, relatively unheard of. I think it's fair to say from yeah. Stuttgart. You know, he's, he's in his 30s already, 16 million. A lot of people are massively underwhelmed when they go, "Oh, I'm not sure about this." But my word, like it's it's been said, it's he's waited his whole life for this opportunity, and that's clear to see. But not only that, and you can take. Take away all the, although isn't it nice? What a story! He's been just brilliant, like absolutely exceptional. Like he's taken to the Premier League in this football club like a duck to water, and I've been so so pleased, so so impressed with him. Far exceeded my expectations. I'm not afraid to say that he, yep. he's been brilliant and a real sort of cornerstone and a real linchpin as to why we've been so successful. He's allowed those around him. We obviously we've seen like McAllister who falls into this category as well, by the way. Yes. But we've yeah. seen him do a job at the six. I think it's fair to say he was good at it. Don't get me wrong, but having with Tara Endo come in and say no I'll take care of this you go and do your stuff has just allowed him to be incredible it's a joy to see someone doing the thing doing things that they clearly really enjoy doing mm. and doing it well for your football club and sometimes you like, play playing fetch well yeah, yeah but, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> go get the ball so but, it, but, it, but it's like you can watch videos there was a there was a, a roundup video of like great Ronaldinho moments that I saw on, on Twitter this week and I, I what I loved about Ronaldinho was how he played with a smile on his face yeah. he just loved football Endo's got that but in, on the different end it's like he just he enjoys being in a scrap mm. like he enjoys going shoulder to shoulder with someone There's a big smile just before he goes shoulder to shoulder yeah. I had a hunch he might buy the gum shield to be honest yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 but yeah, you yeah, might, yeah. You might, on, on that though that you are absolutely spot on and I love all that that grit about him and that gnarliness so much more though as but he's well. ex- exactly he's so much more and again more fool me for not thinking he would be mm-hmm. I thought he would just be this little ball like go and win it for you and he'll put a foot in and then he'll give it to you he's got loads he yeah. can play he can pass he's chipped in with goals wonderful, wonderful can I fine. can I drop a shout in there for Joe Gomez please because yeah. Yeah. I just don't think Liverpool Brilliant. would be where they are this season without nope. him mm-hmm. yeah. you know we've had problems at left back we've had problems at right back um, we've had problems at the six and Joe Gomez has stepped up on each oh, and every yeah. occasion he's played centre half as well added into it we just wouldn't be the football team we are without Joe Gomez this season. And it's there's a mad. there was a lot of people last summer who would would add enough for Gomez. A lot of people, yes. and we look because ultimately I, I mention this often. There's always two to three players in any squad that you assemble that are just at any given point on on outs with that subsection of fans who need to have someone to hate or whatever in, in the team. But Gomez has had his time as that, and I think you know there was there were concerns. Whether he'd ever get back to the level, you know, that he was in the title-winning season, that that spell from like November to January, where he's partnering Van Dijk, and we it's the best defense we've had basically with him in there. But you, because right, you know, football's moved on again, and all of a sudden he's found new life at fullback, which is just yeah, I, I agree with that. I think he's been, I think no, he's been brilliant. He, he, I, it's, it's, Struggle to find the player. I think he's had more of an impact, to be honest mm. with you, rather than maybe a Mo or someone like that. Um, and he's rising to the challenge, isn't it? And that's what he's done this season. Um, he's just been so impressive, so so impressive in every position, man. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Another another player who I think's an unsung hero is Harvey Elliott. I yes. think he yeah. has been unbelievable for us because we, we obviously know um, he's maybe not the the first name on the team. She's a, and and his height at times can can be the reason why he's not but when he's being called upon he's being immense he's you know won us games the likes of the Palace game where he just grabs the game by the scruff of the neck um, he came on against Wolves was unbelievable for that and then in a period where we were on our last legs and it was like we've got no other mm. choice but to start yeah he was doing 90 minutes 120 minutes back to back to back to back he was on his he was on his last legs um, he was hitting the deck after the full time whistle time and time again and yet three days later you were thinking no way can he start this game and he'd go and put another 90 in for you um he just gives everything he gives mm. every last bit um into into the game and for the badge and he clearly adores uh playing for for his, his boy or club um and yeah even though he's maybe not being as pivotal or being 
in the starting eleven as many times as the likes of Joe Gomez. When we've had to call upon him, he has risen to the occasion, and he's also he's came on, um, and he's very much had the attitude of this is my club. Am mm-hmm. I heckler and us drop points here? I'm going for everything under Jurgen Klopp, um, and he's he's helped us get over the line in many games. So yeah, another Sunday, one, another one as well. who's had dissenting voices along the way as well. I think it's fair yeah. to say, and he's kind of he's transformed a lot of people's opinion about him. I think as yep. well, not just you're absolutely spot on what you say. Club, but it's a, not just that desire, that work rate, that endeavour. That's all there in the no. abundance, of course. It's but loads and loads of quality as well on the right. way. Like just absolutely bags of it, and he's coming in different positions as well, similar to Joe Gomez. So I've been made up for Harvey Elliott this year. Twenty years old, yeah. fighting over hundred appearances now for Liverpool. So, how, how, many, how many goals? I think I read. I don't want to get it wrong, but I, I heard it's like twenty goals and assists across England and Liverpool this season. Goal country, I think you might be right. That is ridiculous that well, yeah. for a twenty-year-old. And a year old naughty, that. filthy Verona yeah. volley into the mix as well which shouldn't be allowed <laughs> I, uh, let's stick with Harvey Elliott for a minute yeah I mean 10 goal contributions in all comps so far this season I think the goals need to come a little bit more still from him but this is the thing about Harvey Elliott I am judging him by like 24 25 year old standards and that's so not fair and it's just because he's been with us since he was 16 and it also there's that little thing sometimes of because he's not come up through the academy that you know he was a he was a sign and we and we've had to deal with him being in and out and watch him sort of grow along the way. I don't think he's ever underperformed really for Liverpool. I think he's always broadly impressed for us. You know, we broke his ankle early doors in the you know in the season a couple of years ago and manages to come back in and and, and, and play a role in in that as well. Just to have that and you mentioned that to have those appearances and have that kind of return so far, having missed a huge chunk of a season when he was you know I mean this lad did a season on loan at Blackburn yep. and you know we've we've done this for so many years, Chris, where we go, we, you recognise signs and let's be honest, the signs normally when you send the player to the championship on loan is like see you later, mate. You know you haven't got you haven't got what it takes. He went down there was one of the best players in the championship came up and he kind of hasn't you know even even then breaking his ankle when he comes back he hasn't actually looked back he only seems to get better and better and better. no and you know it's one of those games now isn't it i think Jürgen's seen it this season where you do need your squad more than ever and he seems to be the best substitute we've got in, in many ways as well because I don't know whether he watches the game and he thinks about what he's going to do when he comes on the field and stuff so even if he's only got 10 or 20 minutes he's going to empty the tank of those 10 or 20 minutes and you know you almost know he's going to have an impact and it'll be interesting actually to see how many goal contributions Sobersly has had over the course of the season in comparison to him because we talk about Sobersly in such glowing terms and mm. there are sections who wonder what Harvey Elliott has done it's basically almost a flip reverse. It's 11 for Sabozlai, uh, seven goals and four assists to Elliot's three goals and seven assists. Mm. Yeah. But it's interesting, isn't it? Like, one's yeah. the signing of the year in most people's eyes, <laughs> and one's. Are they still here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's true. And it's, it, I just think it's a great. Again, another one is three years older, captain of his captain of his country. And, you know, to, the, to that point, and I, don't, I feel like I often feel like I talk about people's height a bit too much on this, but the point is, is. Zabal's like six foot three and he's lightning quick. He's got these physical attributes that you know and does not you wouldn't you would choose to have them if you could if you could, particularly in, at the Premier at Premier League level. So Harvey Elliott, you know, you've truly got to be exceptionally gifted if you haven't got all of the physical tools available sort of to you. And um yeah, I agree. I think Harvey Elliott's uh, he's just great, isn't he? And yeah. and it goes back to the, the Chloe's point, the puff fan. Yeah. You can that tell. matters. Yeah, it really does. It really does matter. You know, you, you, sometimes you can ask you can ask people to go and empty the tank. Um, it's difficult for anyone to do, but obviously, if you feel if you're bought into the cause, then you, you're just gonna do it. You're more likely to do it. And Elliot, he's been bought into the cause since he was basically born. <laughs> so uh, getting to see him do that for Liverpool is a, is an absolute thrill. Um, so yeah, um, I've seen there was a good shout out here in the comments here for Alexis McAllister. Mm-hmm. Now it's yeah. interesting because look, he's a new signing, so I think there's a little bit of a you know, I, 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 obviously we've done Endo already, so I think it's fair to continue to to, to mention them. He was brilliant for Brighton. I was a little concerned, Dan, that we might not ever get to see the Brighton Alexis McAllister. You know, when he was he was doing a good old job at num- at number six, we were all buying Andre in there in January to you know to to, to play in there, and maybe give him a little bit more space. But everyone else seemed to be flourishing in the eights, and there was no opportunity for him. And then we've moved him in there, and he's just been oh yeah. That's an absolute superstar. Yeah, I was with the masses on that to be honest with you. I, I already 
my, my stone wasn't cast on him. I did think there could be an opportunity, but it did wonder. When Tabozla was really flourishing and he did hit the ground running, and you think, okay, that's that's what I expected from McAllister. Why hasn't that quite happened? But yeah. more for me because he's grown into every slow burn or what. But he has been, I've said it a few times on various different shows and podcasts in the past month, it feels like now, maybe a little bit longer than that, to be honest, six weeks. Everything good about Liverpool recently has had McAllister's fingerprints on it. He's just been exceptional, absolutely exceptional, whether it be defensively in the attacking sense, goal contributions wise, he's been brilliant. And he's another one who feels like he's really sort of stepped up in business to the challenge. He's spoken about some of the key players that have missing it's almost if he's looked around him and gone oh wow like this lad's not there anymore this lad's not there anymore i need to really start to show it now when he's done it and some he's been unbelievable and i knew we were buying a brilliant footballer don't of course i've seen him a lot for brighton seen him in the world cup of course he's far exceeded my expectations again like he has everything like not just from an attacking center foot maybe he's a bit of an eight and he's not he's everything He's a complete midfielder. He's a complete package. He does a lot. He puts his foot in. He's physical enough when it matters. Quality in possession, quality of passing, really intelligent as well. He knows how to operate. He knows how to position himself. Wonderful, wonderful football. And for 35 million, yeah. my word. Silky footballer. I mean, I look at him and I think of Thiago instantly, just with the way he, he moves about a football pitch. And I don't think, if you see, if you look on TV, you probably don't see that because you don't see the way he glides across a football pitch with and without the ball. And the United game, going back to it, he was one of the only players who I who I really came away from that thinking, my God, mm. you, you can't, no one can moan at you. Um, he was, he's just unbelievable, technically brilliant. Uh, and like you said, that it, it, it's not just... It, I think him playing the number six position has really helped him yeah. um, in terms of getting closer and winning the ball high up um, and being able to tackle people. Uh, but it's also it's the way he uses his body to, mm. to make sure he protects that ball. It's the way he gets out of tight spaces. He always finds the pass. There's, the pass has always got the right amount of control and weight on it as well. Um, um, and yeah, he is an absolute that, superstar. That assist for the Nunes goal as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the vision yeah. to even see that as a possibility, but then to be able to execute that is just out of this world. Yeah. Like that can't go under the radar. That's yeah, phenomenal. And like you think about how Brighton played, they're so different to how we play. You think, oh yeah, they, they, they have the ball and stuff, but Liverpool move the ball from the defence to the attack so much faster than any of the other top teams. There's a massive period of adaptation just involved in that because we quite often do skip the midfield and yet we never skip Alexi McAllister. Mm -hmm. We always find a way to get him involved. So actually a part of it is how do I get on the ball? Where do I need to be to be able to influence this game? It's not like Brighton where there was two of them and everything was ran through those two and out and stuff like that. So it does just take a little bit of time, doesn't it? And he's done everything to an incredibly high level, to be honest with you. Can I just say though a shout out here because I think it's easy to forget about some of the injured players and stuff. But Kurt. my way, Kurt Jones. Yeah, yeah Kurt Jones. Yeah, sure. I mean, like there was a there was a time where he's the first midfielder on the team sheet, yeah. Yeah. and he's got injured, and we kind of forget about him. But we should not forget about him. He was That's brilliant this point. season. Yeah, I can't wait for him to come back. January. Yeah, you're right. There's, there's tons like that because we were talking about oh, obviously Connor Bradley's been, been a, a big topic of conversation for us in recent days. Um, <laughs> But like, there's going to come a point where some of these lads are going to come back in, and there's a chance they might come in and be even, even better. You know, like Casey Jones could come back and have had a little bit more time to analyse. You come back with a little, even more fire in his belly. You know, you could get it. You could get an even better performance out of him. Trent Alexander Arnold. I'm expecting Trent well. to come back in and have some fire in his belly. Like, hundred yeah. percent. Could he need to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Without, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, the great comments here actually from uh, Dave, who says. Uh, uh, the time where we were all hyped for Andre, uh, Kefran Tera and Manu Kone seems like years ago now. Right. Done it though, you know, uh, and and it's funny to think, isn't it? Like again, you know, the, the the stress and strain around that transfer window, you know, and, and Endo's just gone and eased that so much, of course. And obviously, you know, we don't want to laugh at someone else's misfortune, but you know, Lavia's been confirmed out for the out for the season. He's played a handful of minutes for Chelsea, but there was a point where we were all in on him, where we we had, we had to be because that was the only guy who were left who was left on the market, seemingly. 50 million quid for a teenager who'd done a season at, half a season at Southampton or whatever and then we've we've you know trusted the process they've gone out and they've brought these lads in just unreal there's tons by the way and thank you to everyone who's, who's, who's sending comments in uh, Quance a couple of people uh, Dan uh, Oliver yeah. Day there and uh, Chris Dobson both saying uh, Keller has a shout by the way yeah, Keller has another great another Given great shout the, what we perceive to be the drop off from Alison to Keller and there's no you know, there's no 
disgracing that Alisson's the very best in the world. But given what Keller had been showing, or the lack of what he'd been showing, I think it's fair to say, previously, I think we were all a little bit like, oh, this could be this could be worrying. But he's been absolutely yeah. exceptional in recent the, weeks. The, the problem is, with a question like that, it literally could be the entire squad. Because to get to where we are right now, yeah, to be the squad, level yeah. of consistency to keep up with Manchester City and Arsenal, you have to have pretty much everyone being at their top level all yeah. season. You can't carry passengers when in this league when you're going for a title and you're going against Manchester City. Um, so, you know, absolutely anyone could be in I'll that. give you a it's... random example of that. Who no one will have thought about. Joel Matip was having a brilliant season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was having a brilliant... And, and again, he's another one. We're like, we've we've squeezed every drop of football we're ever getting out of Joel Matip's body there. And uh, and he started the season. He was keeping Canate out the team. Yeah. He was keeping Gomez out the team. He was man of the match until he put it in the back of his own net against Spurs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that momentarily. Oh, I'm going to do one, um, and again, because it's a podcast and we can't go podcast without talking about the, the most box office player at Liverpool Football Club. Darwin, but I saw Darwin. this tweet from Cy Brundish, a friend of the show. He said, Darwin having a great year, all comps. Salah, top three, all-time great Liverpool player. And Suarez is the best player ever to play for Liverpool. And he's pulled together uh, a chart of best individual season for LFC. Now, obviously, the current season is, is, is still going on. But in terms of minutes for per goal and assist, currently Salah um, is second only to Luis Suarez as 13 14. Uh, in third place is Salah's 8 17 18. You're getting at Rush's 83 84. Uh, and then Darwin Nunes um, beneath that. And, you know, it's Darwin. I think the longer we have him, the more we'll come to accept, you know, what he can and what are you, what are you what are you gonna get with him? And ultimately, he's going to miss chances because centre forwards miss chances. But hopefully, the more if he continues to do all the other stuff, Chris, we'll probably come to realise that yeah, even the best people miss things sometimes. Because yeah, I I, I joke I half jokingly said I'd pick him over Harland on a on a Saturday social a couple of weeks ago because I just I I love the emotion of football and I just find him thrilling to watch, but. A year ago, it was a bit, I heard it described as being a bit Everton of like this agent of chaos thing, like we're clapping and chanting for this guy who just comes on and doesn't score goals or get assists. Everybody runs around loads and, 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 and you know, and looks quite energetic. Well, he's got, he's, he's in danger of becoming the complete package. He's stepped up in a huge way this yeah, season. Yeah, he, he has massively. He's me. I think he's my favourite Liverpool player and the player I hate the most at the same time. <laughs> um, he's, he, but he's divisive to say the least, isn't he? And, you know, I got, I lost my head with him big time in November, December. I was, I was, like ready to give up on him completely and since that point I've just been blown away by what he's been able to do and you know there are players out there who've had absolutely incredible careers who've won pretty much everything um, like Raheem Sterling actually we were talking about him last week weren't we but you know he can't kick a football can't score a goal but he's scored loads of goals over the course of his career and I'm not comparing him in, in, in the way he shoots to Sterling I think Nunes is 10 times the finisher that Raheem Sterling is but players, are, they're a brilliant players and they never... Like Ronaldo, he averages seven shots a game as well. He scored loads of goals, but he missed mm. probably six a game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There are players that just do that and Darwin Nunes seems to be one of them and I'd much rather have him for us than against us. And that's a big compliment, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. He's just... Um, yeah, he said box office is the word for me. I just think he's absolutely thrilling to watch. And, you know, and I, I'm going to cut a lead this on to, you know, almost what our title slash Europa League ambitions hinge upon. You, know, you posed the question to us before we went on air about like if you could choose someone to stay injury free, who would it be? Um, I And I've, I've been looking at the goal output from some of the, the other teams, which again, we'll go into more on, on the Bias Football Pod, but having Mohamed Salah fit is huge because he's the best, best player in the league, in terms, in terms, for me anyway, in terms of attacking players. If you can have Darwin Nunes continue to perform at this level along Mo Salah, performing at Mo Salah's level, then we're a frightening, frightening prospect because there's not, I don't think anyone else has really got that level of a two man sort mm. of quality that, that we have. So um, Darwin for me is just so central because I think you can't guarantee Jota, Dan, as much as we could. You know, I'd love to. I'd, I'd, I'd love to have more Jota and hopefully we get to see a little bit of him before the season's mm. out. Mm. 
Diaz, I think, has stepped up brilliantly as well in terms of physical output as much as anything else. Gakpo's left us a little with a little bit to be desired, but yeah, you know, if we can keep Darwin I, and, he, and, he, and it continues on this sort of vein, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, there's no two ways about it. Like he's made himself absolutely imperative. He's made himself a real sort of talismanic leader of the front line. Um, and I think you're right. I think there's definitely been times this season. Now is probably one of them whereby he's one of the first names on the team sheet because of the way he, the way he leads the line and the goal contributions he gives, and not just in terms of his goals and assists, but what he offers the front line more generally speaking as well. We often say he's a nightmare for defenders and all that sort of stuff, but it rings true. Um, and also it's that. It's the magnitude of the goals he's got this season as well at times. Like he's come up with big winners. We often speak about Diogo Jota in those clutch moments. That's why we love him so much because it tends to be the case that his goals matter. They yeah. mean points more often than not. But Darwin Nunes is guilty of that as well in a positive way this season. We've seen obviously the Newcastle winners, the Forest goal we mentioned earlier. So yeah, I think Darwin, Salah, both of them clearly. But my third pick would be Diogo Jota. My first um, pick would be Diogo Just because, in terms of the front line, solely speaking here, just because, again, I come back to it, it feels like when the moment comes and you want the guy in front of the goal to score you the goal that matters more than most, more than ever, it's Diogo Jota. Time and time again. If Honestly, missed- I think it'd be cheating. If we if we could get Jota back for the rest of the season and keep Salah and Nunes fit, I think we'd piss well, whatever's it's, left to come, it's, to be honest. It's the lack of care... <laughs> for how big either a moment is or yeah. the game is with Jota <laughs> because he's not asked. Ultimately, yeah. he does not give a single shite because yeah. it does. this could be the most important moment in a footballer's career and it's like the most normal thing in the world to him. Nothing phases him and that's still why... Still a goal. Still a goal. Exactly. Yeah. When you're looking at a run it maybe it's the FIFA thing, when you're looking no, at a is. run in and how big some of these games are going to be and how big some of these moments might be, that's why immediately my mind turns to Diogo Jota because he doesn't feel like he's affected by anything, any circumstances. Darwin Nunes, we know he plays on emotions, he's quite raw, he's quite he's passionate, I love all that about him, but could he be influenced by the situation? Possibly. Salah, not really, doesn't really matter to him, but Jota's the one. Like, if if the we're one. in another one of those final game of the season moments and you want something to drop to someone yes, we yeah. all have well, Jota right? so it's, we... it's the fact of if you have Jota in both that United game and City game I think we win both I, I think it's that simple mm-hmm. I really do I think if it's just Jota on the end of one of those chances it's a goal like that's just the way I see it so he's a massive massive miss for us uh, and the quicker we can get him back the, the the better because he is the most most lethal striker we've got and it's not just that but he's got a bit of a shit house about him that I like he's so calm not an affects him but if you get under his skin oh he'll run with it and I love that as well mm, yeah definitely so look in terms of like what's going to get in sort of our way how, how are we feeling what, what's, what's our strengths Going ahead, what's what might give us a bit of a stumble trip sort of moment? What do you think? Gabby, injuries, right? Yeah, injuries. Biggest concern, mm-hmm. them are the refs. Yeah, <laughs> the PGMOL genuinely they've tried the best. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm confident. I am. I'm genuinely really confident heading into it. Like, I mean, there's obviously you know obstacles to overcome on the ways. No two ways about. It. A couple of fixtures in there. You look at it and go, I'm not sure, but that's the same for all of us. I think we've got the the kindest running I think it's fair to say but in terms of us centric yeah with our firepower coming back now we spoke about injured players getting back involved we've just strength for the bench and all that sort of stuff yeah it's all there for us there's no two ways about that there's the now well talked about four back to back away games looming um, including Europa League I think there's still a chance we might get one of them moved if other if West Ham the West Ham one could yeah be. Um, but Atalanta away to see out the quarters of the Europa League, Fulham away, Everton away, West Ham away feels like it's a big old defining. Way. Yeah, I mean, and and again, I, we're, we're we're a little ways away from it, so I can say things like I'm glad that it is not Arsenal away, City away, Chelsea away, Tottenham away, or whatever in that run of fixtures. Yeah. To be to be fair, um, that's definitely one to keep, to keep an eye on, um. The thing I'm actually really looking forward to in the next couple of weeks, because we'll, we'll have a clear picture before we even get to that, Chris, is it's the next Manchester United game um, because, I don't know, I see how I feel as we get to it, but my immediate reaction w- w- as that game finished through the week was, I just feel like we're just going to go and absolutely smash them ne- next time. And now, now, 
I was reasonably confident ahead of the FA Cup game. I don't feel like I was totally underser- underserved in terms of Liverpool's level of performance, or whatever in that game. Maybe the finishing. Um, I yeah, I'm I'm eager for them to continue to feel really good about themselves yeah, until no, that game. That, that's fine. Like I mean, you, you, we've seen it already this season. We've been on the receiving end of it with Arsenal, obviously, haven't we? With you know beating them in a cup and then obviously going and losing in, a, in the Premier League and stuff. It does happen quite often like that anyway. Yeah. I think the biggest problem that we had during the game against Manchester United, I don't really think we got to grips with their man-to-man barking. Mm-hmm. As much as we were toying around with them and stuff, I think that was the biggest problem for us. I imagine that Pep and Jürgen Klopp will now be able to absolutely put that to bed yeah. and be like, lads, this is what you should have done. This is how you go about it. And I'm, I don't I'm think we, I don't think we got really accept, do. I don't think we got used to the trolley dash of like kicking the ball over their midfield and being completely in on their 18 yard box I still think at the, yeah. the gym was strong. it's like being poor your entire life and then someone yeah, you go into trolley here's HMV fill your boots you you wouldn't know how to you wouldn't know how to no, live. like to be respectful to United for, for a change they created far too many chances against us as well yeah, yeah. far mm. too many like 20 odd shots was it they had it could have like been 3-0 to them score before. 4 Keller made a couple of big saves yeah, yeah. so the, the, we went as much as we did toy around with them far too much they were a lot more in the game than I think Liverpool fans realised yeah yeah we're going to bash them next time well no but this is the thing about <laughs> it this time around we both play in the we both play in the midweek beforehand we play Sheffield United they play I think they play Chelsea before they play us as well and might might even be at Stamford Bridge. I will mm. check that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm I think that feels like one that's going to be hyped up. And I've just got it, my, my my gut feeling on that is that we're probably going to end up. And look, there's a lot of football. More injuries can drop on your plate in the you know in in, in that spell of time before then. But that's a big one for me because I think that's going to be billed as a real pivotal sort of you know moment to be hinged on. And weirdly, you know having mad games against like Fulham away and the Merseyside derbies you know another weird one for us as well in, in that even West Ham where they, they can be kind of tricky fixtures and feel like Man United will almost do their own heads in to some extent because there's now a huge pressure almost on them to repeat the again. feat yeah, yeah yeah whereas I don't think it's a repeat I don't think what they did is a repeatable feat at least, in, at least, in, at least of all because they beat us an extra time <laughs> you know what I mean we lost but we didn't lose in normal in, in, in a normal time football match Claire? No, I, I don't know. I don't feel that. Um, it's Manchester United at Old Trafford. They came to Anfield and they got a draw out of us. Yeah. We've gone there and they've beat us. So you definitely own one. Right now, um, I think, look, uh, like you said there, they caused us so many problems. The deep runners from midfield that Liverpool just weren't tracking. We couldn't get a grip. They were all over us. We we probably could have been 3 0 down by half time, but Liverpool won a ball high up the pitch with Batardo Endo and Salah was offside for Endo's goal, but it woke us up. Yeah. Um and you saw the best of Manchester United and they just got tired at one stage. But what they did was they for the a large part of that second half, they recharged the batteries whilst also being able to stay within grips with Liverpool. Liverpool could have put that game to bed, but they didn't. And Manchester United just saved themselves to then be able to really put the foot back down. Um, it's Manchester United at Old Trafford and let me tell you, yet they've got is a Coventry in the FA Cup so the FA Cup's massive to them, I totally get that, but making sure Liverpool don't win a league title like that could also be what their season comes down to um, and they'd absolutely love to do that. There'll be more want and there'll be you know a decent atmosphere with the fact that it, it is the league so um, I'm just trying to not be complacent I'll worry about it when we actually get there I think we've got the much better side but just having the much better side doesn't guarantee you anything in this game so um, for me right now I, I just hope we don't get complacent and we actually put one on them because we've been a little bit too respectful they play Chelsea uh, Quarter past eight kick-off on a Thursday. We're going to absolutely fucking batter When do they play in the FA Cup, Sammy? Is it they, the 20th or something like that? The 21st of April. Okay. Do we all play that week? Like, is yeah, it just... Full, it's a full calendar. So, can we go three points ahead with City having a game in hand? City's game, I think, is Tottenham that weekend. So, that's obviously been moved, moved. for their Chelsea game in the Cup. Right. So, I think City have still got two... Well, the, before I went to Ireland, they had two games that weren't in the calendar. They might have now put them back it's in. It's just Spurs that Brighton isn't in the Spurs? calendar. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so us and Arsenal can put three points on the board and then they're okay. 
interesting stuff it's the that this weekend too. and, and mm. the Europa League we touched upon it obviously but um, Atalanta it'd be interesting to see how we handle that it's it's certainly the fixtures are placed in the more dramatic fashion as much as you always want to come back to Anfield and have the second leg at home there is also something to like that real drama of going to some go to someone else's gaff like that. Barcelona beating Barcelona and knocking and knocking them out at Anfield was a you know it's one of the might be the greatest Anfield night, but also booking a place in the Champions League final in the Stadio Olimpico was also uh, was also a pretty pretty good thing as well. And obviously it's only the, the quarters, but yeah, how Liverpool get through Atlanta Atalanta is going to be important to, to what we do there. I like the idea of. Benfica or Marseille in the next round I prefer the idea of Benfica just because I don't want to go and die in Marseille that would be preferable for me if nothing else but it's certainly encouraging but I think that, I think I think you're right Chris injuries are going to determine what happens here who who, how many people can we get back and can we keep more can we keep a net positive from here on in mm. you know the people are going to be injured that happens football there's always players injured at football clubs but can we reach a point where Trent, when Trent comes back in, he stays back in. Can we reach a point where you know Canate's back and he stay and he stays in for the rest of the season? Jota would be another one. Jota just feels like he'd be the, the biggest win ever. But it, I think you're dead right. That's going to be it, really. Isn't it, it? it has to be for the way that the season's gone. But again, Jürgen's learned so much about the sort of fringe players in the squad that I think there's just a lot more trust that you know maybe we maybe we were guilty of rushing a couple of players back. Obviously Salah comes in and re-aggravates. Trent Alexander Arnold comes in and re-aggravates an injury. Was Canate's a re-aggravation as well? I can't remember if that one was or wasn't. But I don't think so. No. Uh, no. Uh, well, he just that many. He probably did re-aggravate <laughs> something um, from five years ago. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, it, if we can take one step back and two forward in injury terms, I suppose that's what you're saying, yes, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah. That's what we need to do. Just keep adding players to the squad. Mm. Um, I, I feel confident that that's the only thing, to be honest, that can stop us. Yeah. But uh, but also sorry, but also. City and Arsenal have had their own little setbacks this week, yeah. haven't they, as well? So, you know, it's not just injuries for us. Maybe the injuries could have be a positive. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I watched I think Kyle so. Walker start this weekend. I don't think John Stones will be John Stones, yeah, yeah. fine, uh, really good. Saka, though, he went home early. He'll be absolutely yeah. fine. But what you've just said there has already been started, been borne out, because obviously Van Gravenberg was back on the bench for the Man United yeah. game. I but forgot about clearly that. Clearly, we kept him wrapped in cotton wool because we weren't quite sure. And instead, the trust was placed in Bobby Clark, which is yeah. what you've just said testament to how much we've learned about these fringe players now and that little bit of extra caution maybe could stand us in good stead for what's to come are we excited yes Very. Buzzing. absolutely buzzing. cannot Can't wait. wait yeah really genuinely I, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the international break has helped me so much as well though yeah. because I feel like do you remember when we were on for the quad and I just felt like every game I wanted to die because it was just <laughs> far too emotional I was yeah. far too invested I feel like I've had a nice little two week break where I have not cared about England <laughs> Or any other international breaks, um, just and, Scotland. Um, yeah, just Scotland, <laughs> um, and then I'm I'm ready to go again. It's been a nice palate cleanser, it really has. I agree with that. I mean, sometimes you get, and this has been the most pleasant an internationals break has been ever, ever been off the back of Liverpool losing a game of football, and mm-hmm. that goes my point about the Manchester United thing is that we seem to have compartmentalised that, packed that away mm-hmm. pretty quick. And look, if if that that needs to be a blip, a one-off, use the positive, use the springboard to, to really push on for the rest of the season and not the beginning of the end. Um, but that's on the lads to, to perform. And, you know, I, again, I, I feel ready for it. Brighton, very excited. Yeah, I, we'll wonder, I wonder how the international break would have gone had England not done the update to the kit. <laughs> because it's sort of galvanised us in one direction because of the gammons and all that, hasn't yeah. it? Where it's like, normally there'd be fume around something else, but everyone's just laughing at them. Absolutely. Yes, we will be discussing that uh, over on the Bias Football Pod after this podcast. Right, we're going to take a break. When we return, uh, we're going to be doing Liverpool versus Brighton as the real stuff returns on Sunday. Hey all you wonderful people, we've got an amazing competition prize for all of the Legend Tier subscribers on Revan Plus this month. I was lucky enough to interview former Liverpool striker and World Cup winning German superstar Karl Heinz Riedler and get him to sign this little beauty. Oh yes, look at it. It is it's a sensational shirt anyway, but it's got Karl Heinz Riedler's name on it, and you can win it by being a Legend Tier subscriber on Red Men Plus by the end of this month. Uh, and yeah, your name will be in the draw to win this look at that wonderful and it can be yours (laughs) 
just a quick um, public service announcement if you're the kind of person who witters away on on um, on, on voice notes just stop it it's it's you know it is just brilliant because you go here um yeah so um uh, what was i gonna say so and then it's like 20 seconds of that before they say stop it stop the recording cut, cut, start again cut take two <laughs> fucking hell stop wasting my time waste your own time like like yeah, if you, I mean and uh, it's changed my mind since I, since I discovered on Android you can just put it to your ear and you don't have to play it to the fucking world um, so I'm, I'm a little calmer about them but it is that general sense of I've got to find time in my life to put aside to listen to a voice note whereas it takes nothing for me to read something my reading my reading age is alright you know what I mean I can, I can glance through that but it takes you more time to type that text out again that's your time you take your time not my time anyway I've not even no one has even done it to me lately I've just listened to, I've just seen Chloe doing this and that's one of the like the fucking great ooh. anyway poor old iPhone users they can't even put it to their ears um, anyway I just do this for the rest of the show. To be honest, I've got a lot of residual anger left in me. I'm quite, I'm quite tired and quite grumpy. Uh, I've not had a lot of sleep of late, but anyway, um, just to bring back the energy from part one, I am excited for the return of the football. Liverpool versus Brighton. Um, we're playing Chris for the right to enjoy the City versus Arsenal game. Oh, I think yeah, yes. 4.30 kickoff for them, is it? It's just after us. <laughs> we won't be anywhere aside from in a queue outside Anfield. <laughs> and watch, we watch it on our phone in Chris's car, yeah. probably uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, waiting to get out of the traffic, whatever, whatever. I've enjoyed some good games I, on the radio. Honestly, I, I think that game's going to be so interesting to watch because I, I fancy Arsenal to do something yeah. in it. And I don't know if that's good or bad for us anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a crazy thing. It's like, do we do we want to draw here? In yeah, that game? I really is do. It, it's crazy. Draw Arsenal. City win in that order yeah draw Arsenal City win yeah okay so, but no on to Brighton for us it's just being able to put that marker down it is pivotal in a title running who plays first on the weekend yes. and it always has been mm-hmm. you'd rather a day before much rather a day before you want them to stew on it a little bit but equally when they're in the dressing room about to go out and they just hear that Liverpool have scored a last minute winner that's deflating that's as hell as well fans I think that's actually a player thing I think well. it's a player thing as well I, yeah. I but honestly I think that that either one or the other I think it's either a last gasp winner so like because you want it there's like body chemistry involved here, you know, like and how you how you react to stuff because there's no way they won't have one eye on it of like how, how Liverpool are getting on and if you go Oh, Liverpool are losing that 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 gets you up or you know if Liverpool are five nil up you know and maybe you switch off to it I don't know but there is definitely something in that and I, when we've had been in these situations before what Liverpool have done when they put it brilliantly when we put you know so much distance between us and City the one time we actually did it was that thing of like you make it academic and you make it such that. I'm going to have to go out here for 95, 100 minutes and give every egg of energy that I've got and the best I can hope for in, is that we're, we're going to be second. We'll be 20 points per Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's, that's, that, that's the beauty of playing first in the running is that the best you can play for is is to... Where you were. Be Have exactly where you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly the, that. The other thing is, is, I don't care what you say, it has a massive impact on the stadium because yeah, if you hear true. about what everyone was saying about the Etihad for that, that game where I think if we would have scored minutes earlier we'd have they'd have been even more crap um, but Villa had completely silenced them it was the players on the pitch that got them the title yeah. it wasn't the fans who galvanised them yeah. it, everyone who spoke about it commentators have said the nerves inside that stadium yeah. like people were just getting angry because you feel like you've lost it um, and the players on that day Manchester City decided to sh- Gundogan just decided aye lads it, mm. it's me um, but it Definitely, you know, if they're going into that game, Liverpool have just won and things aren't quite going your way in the game, the stadium is a massive thing if, if you don't have your fans, the, the correct kind of fans who will really back you inside the stadium when, the, when you need. Definitely. I, I, this is the thing for us. It's, it's, and the good thing about playing first is that that's all you, that's, that you ease that from the, from the flip reverse. I don't have to think about that game mm. until ours is done. You know, again, it goes back to the end and the right thing. Um, that we haven't beaten them at Anfield since 2019. Mm. Um, it would be nice if we put a, a, a swift end to that, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, essential. Um, bit of a bogey team, really, aren't they? Not just at Anfield, team, really, wherever we play them in, whatever competition um, in recent <laughs> times, to be honest with you. Um, I, 
can't quip up my finger on why that is. I mean, the Ando Trossard was a, a good old reason for a little bit there. Um, yeah, obviously very good side. Um, a little bit kryptonite, I think, for what Klopp wants to do in many ways. Certainly De Zerbi's style and stuff like that. I think that's not helped, but Potter wasn't too dissimilar. And De Zerbi's just kind of Potter, Potter plus, rather. He kind of added goals to them. I know he was an XG buster for a while, but I think mm. he's kind of a, he's broken the shackles somewhat. But I'm... I'm more confident heading into this game than I have been in recent Brighton fixtures for a lot of different reasons. But obviously what it means being one, the fact that it is Anfield, despite the record you mentioned there. But I think Brighton have become a little bit inconsistent of late. We've seen obviously was it four they got beat by Roma recently. They've been shipping goals. And when you look at the firepower we possess and the way we can put teams to the sword, I think I am relatively confident heading into it, but despite that. And yeah, bogey team. But again, another reason, all the more reason to go and really sort of do a job on them and put them to bed quickly if possibly can because what they have got is they have got spirit and they have got proven track record of hurting us so let's kill all possible hope early if anyone wants a very small thing for the superstitious amongst you the last time we beat them at Anfield in the league we won the league that season. excellent so there you go That's it's it. also the, the Anfield thing yeah. with the egg and stuff is massive isn't it obviously we're going to have a maximum of seven eight home games but seven of them being at Anfield because I'm classing Dublin as a home game <laughs> um, <laughs> That, that is not a lot of games to enjoy Jürgen Klopp on the sidelines at no, Liverpool, is it? Enough, Funny enough, I got an email um, last week from, from someone in America who's like shitting themselves about not being able to see Jürgen Klopp on the sideline in Anfield and I think they've paid whatever they needed to pay to, to get themselves in because it's a dream for them to, to go on and, and do it and the, stuff like that. One so. of the guys who sits by me at the, at the ground basically said, he, he said like, again, like money, but also the whole like, the effort it goes, and, you know, and the emotion you've got to pour into supporting your club home and away and he just kind of went, I'm just gonna get every. I'm gonna get all of every possible ticket that I mm. that I can away games and all that kind of stuff that stuff he wouldn't normally have done because yeah he just feels compelled to make sure that he, he sees as much of that as possible. Yeah. The, that, the other right. thing is, I'm so sorry, but that that Arsenal City game, City Arsenal game, is massive because it means that look a draw is what I want here and if a draw comes out of that Liverpool can capitalise it's a chance for Liverpool to capitalise on either of those teams so that Anfield crowd is going to be up for it yeah. even more yeah. and that is vitally important as well yeah. and that's it I, I, this is the thing now we, but there's up, there's up, there's good games and bad games at Anfield and look this, this any game can be anything I think you know depending on how the game sort of goes but hopefully now I talk about it before but like that whole thing when you fix your list fits on one screen mm. you know you're in the running there's now there's 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 like light at the end of the tunnel this isn't that november slog where you're playing three every three days and it's just and it nothing really matters because you can lose group games and then you can draw league games and still be there or thereabouts this is it now it's like some of us have got some of us might get to all of those 15 games some of us might only get to the six or six or seven you know some people might get to one or two whatever it takes if you're the kind of person who's in the in the hunt to go to all of them you're probably the kind of person for whom that's not a lot of games left mm. <laughs> either way no matter what it is it's not much so actually uh, for me i'm looking at it going like mike summer all these come at the end of that i can do that now but, but this is the, this is the 50 running. odd days i think yeah but also like if the weather turned as well like, uh, yes do you remember the 13 oh, 14 on. and obviously it didn't end well and all that type of stuff but the coach greetings for every game like we're we're about to enter that stretch yeah and we just didn't get to do it in 1920 did we no, yeah. that is it yeah. they, it is going to turn into a it's mad such a party i would not expect you to say that it's such a <laughs> so right yeah like i've, I've, I've not actually thought of it that way but i actually haven't been in this situation before like I haven't. Like we've won it, but I wasn't. I wasn't there, so yeah. I have That's not been. In all of this, I have way. not been. The last ten games, when a Premier League is up for grabs in terms of actually being able to win it. Yeah, we we came close twice, but I've not been there for when we've actually won it. When I've been able to have like mm -hmm. an impact on these last ten games, when you feel like you're winning it. Yes, that that is a good point. Though. And the weather. The weather. Honestly, Love the weather's it. massive. Mate. It's more <laughs> last than the weather at this point. It, it, it needs to stop raining. We need yeah, to start right. getting in shorts and getting down to meet the yeah, coach. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not shorts for me, but a Greek <laughs> at Hotel Anfield in the sun. <laughs> 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 I'm not getting into shorts, but I'm going to get into a Greek. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, um, what part of Yamas and all that? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, the weather's the weather's huge. They say about warm weather train as well, like preventative injuries as well. So who knows? Oh, beautiful, yeah. definitely. Oh, I love all of that, and they don't have that in Manchester. Or London. No, no, they no, won't, the weather won't turn for them. No, no, no. Rain every day. Yeah, yeah. Every day. Um, yeah it, it, it's interesting. Like, 
I can I can make a case for any sort of outcome on this and how it's positive. The most positive outcome is just going to be a win for Liverpool. You know, yep. I can spin it anyway after the fact. But there is a little part of me I would love us to just put a display on here and really just you know, particularly because we were so profligate at, at Old Trafford before mm. the international break, I, like the goal difference thing. It, it, it's a thing. It's literally it's a thing right now. It's not. It's. It, I don't think goal goal difference is to be concerned about just yet. It will be maybe as the season sort of wears on a little bit closer. But it would be lovely to take a huge chunk out of that and actually put down a very imperious performance and then go to City and Arsenal. Go ahead, kind of follow that. See see, see how you get on with it. Um, Let's talk about the eleven. Um, just as a quick aside before we do, because I don't think he's going to be available for this one. Maybe, but uh, Joseph Clark says, uh, "Is it too late in the season to put Trent in midfield? Just think we'd be stronger with him there and Bradley uh, and Joe at right back." Um, the issue is, I guess, Dan is like, is like who's available, who's going to be coming back in for this one, mm. and Trent's forever thing is, you know. McAllister's now finding his feet as an as an eight. Endo's finding his feet as a six. You know, Curtis Jones is going to come back in at yep. some point to Bosley, Elliot, yep. Gravenberch back fit again. You know, look if Trent's good enough, then he'll get in above all of those lads, of course. But I'm personally just looking forward to being to seeing it right back doing all the things that he's brilliant at, but more and going. Oh yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why. That's where I fall down. To be honest, my my initial thought there was where does he get into that midfield? Because you're right, we've spent the the first half of the show waxing Liverpool about nigh on all of the midfielders that we possess. So I find it hard. It's still a little bit experimental, ever so slightly. Him in midfield, it yeah. feels like you know it could be wonderful, but there's very much a lot of hinges on the could be there. So I'm not quite sure about it yet. He possesses everything it takes to be a brilliant midfielder. There's no two ways about that. But we haven't really seen it in fruition yet. We haven't seen it in its fullest. So I'm not sold. I'd still be having him right back, and I, I made the point earlier on, like Connor Bradley has very much staked the claim to be the right back from now until the end of the season, but then Trent comes, and Trent's this incredibly gifted generational footballer, so ultimately, it's kind of a nice problem to have, let's put it that way, and I think there's a world whereby Trent does 60-70% of the right back stuff between now and the end of the season, and Connor Bradley just drops in and out and shows us how brilliant he is as well, that's perfect to me. Might need just, Gomez at left back just, as well, the moment just with to play devil's advocate on it, because I do think it is interesting, is there were games when he was the break glass solution we did put him in midfield earlier on in the season yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if we had those moments during the next 10 games where that if he is, goes into there yeah if, oh, if yeah, we yeah, just yeah. go shit something needs to happen yeah. let's just put him there and see what, what will happen because he can mm, shoot from absolutely well, anywhere can, yeah, exactly. we did it earlier on in the season and it, games I agree with what you were saying yeah, yeah. but you, at, there are times when it, everything matters yeah. where I think we might I just don't think he starts games in there personally I agree I take, agree yeah. I agree yeah. I was playing that was no, I, yeah, no, I, I, but I, I think your point is right in that we've almost forgotten that we've spent a lot of time in the season going okay well let's put Gomez at right back and it'll be Bradley at right back now I think we're for chasing yes, the game yeah, yeah. Trent goes into midfield and then you take Endo off or something and all of a sudden you've got Trent McAllister Sobers Liars in midfield three with Connor Bradley flying down the right hand side mm -hmm. which there's the, you know I think there's a lot of extra training that's going to be required if you, Trent wants to be a six or whatever for Liverpool and we've got an abundance of lads who play in, in the eights already so that would be a it's just it's more like you should use what you've got that, that you know that's a that's a that would be mad I think it feels like the Trent midfield thing is actually the next manager's problem oh it's 100% the next yeah. manager's problem <laughs> and, and, it, yeah. and it's going to be started by a big knock on the door by Trent yeah, yeah. well yeah it might not but it might be the other way around I, I, I was thinking uh, Rafa Benitez comes in and what's the first thing he does? He makes sure he gets on a, com on a conversation with Jamie Carragher, Stephen Gerrard and Michael Owen. And he manages to convince Gerrard and Carragher that it's all good. Michael Owen, he, he can't. Mm -hmm. And Michael Owen's out, out the door. And we might find something similar happens sort of this summer with yeah. some of the players. I, mean, I was saying to someone over the weekend in Ireland, like, you, you know, you, you see Zabby, let's say Zabby Alonso is the next Liverpool manager, just looks at him and goes... You can do everything I did. <laughs> he just kick, he kicks the ankles a couple of times and goes, midfielder. <laughs> <laughs> that, that obvious? Yeah. 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 What, what the fuck have you been playing right back for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're a midfielder. Yeah, simple. No, 100%. Um, okay, let's pick an 11. Anyone? Oh. Uh, does anyone know anything more about who might... Curtis go? James. Curtis James. Canates. Canates played 90 last night for France. Graven Birch can obviously play. Yeah. Uh, Darwin Nunes expected to be in contention for uh, Brighton. Invested um, Darwin Nunes at that. Yeah. One. I think Primed. Trent was looking at Manchester United okay. uh, to be the game back. Um, 
Jota and Alison Becker sometime in April still, so they were the only ones that. The Jettis has obviously had a little. The Jettis, Jake yeah. 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 a bit of a oh, yeah, April, glow yeah. up as well. That lad, yeah. you seen the picture of him? No. Not skipping leg day. It's My calves. word, I've never seen a calf yeah. like it. I thought it looked like it was Jack popping. Up. It looked, looked like it was a problem. You do, I mean, <laughs> it looked like it had popped. Do yeah. we think this is like that time when Klopp said this when he came in and Gomez had been out for like with his crew shit and they looked at him and he'd just been in the gym so he had like beach muscles yeah, yeah. because he just had he was bored and let to do something oh, yeah. but Jess has just been what what can I do? Yeah. Just, just working he's on his right calf. <laughs> That's <laughs> all he's done. Calf for the last eight months. It's scary. Have you man, seen the picture? Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is. It's frightening. Um, but him coming back at some point would be nice as yeah, well. But yeah, make it about right in terms of the injury update and the injury front. Yeah, sounds about. I haven't thought about eleven for so long. By the so way, <laughs> let's let's think about it then. So it's going to be Callahan in goal. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be Gomez left back. Do we yeah. think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I would say yeah. so. The Robbo injury doesn't look great. Ben Simicast in this conversation as well, but yeah, I would imagine yeah, it's Gomez. I'm not. It's Gomez. Um, Van Dijk and Canate. Yeah. yeah. Bradley? Yeah. yeah. Endo McAllister. Endo McAllister. Sobberslai. Sobberslai. Yeah. Curtis Jones off the bench. Diaz, Nunez, Salah. 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 Easy peasy. Look at that. Look at Delight. that. Good side, though. That's a fucking good side, good that, side isn't that it? Fight, is there no bone of contention around the left back at all for anyone? No. no. Not Gomez. even. There isn't even a conversation. Not even. It's exactly. weird, isn't it? And uh, look, hopefully it's it's just a precautionary thing for Robertson and it doesn't look good because he's like, he's almost crying on the pitch, isn't he, when he when he, when he he gets hurt. You know, that, that pulling your shirt above your eyes thing is not, not someone who's as hard as Andy Robertson, you know what I mean? But the fact that he, I know, look, Virgil van Dijk walked off at Goodison Park, so I'm, I'm very wary of this as, as a thing. On the Michael Owen visual pain scale, when I saw him walking off, it didn't look more than a couple of weeks at most to me, Andy <laughs> Robertson. Um, I can get a ball with that. But there is, so, uh, but I was also thinking about this, about like Bradley's been brilliant and Gomez has been brilliant and Robertson's been really good since he came back in. I want Gomez on the pitch as much as possible for the rest of the season. And it's strange how that sometimes happens, isn't it? That if Robertson's back and fit, I think he probably starts more games at left back than Gomez does. Bradley will eventually make you know, himself on un- I've un- been having these dark thoughts late at night that involve Trent at left back. And, and right, have you been, have you been on up, James Alcott's <laughs> uh, Twitter account? No. Oh, okay. Why has he been saying that? Apparently so. Has he, yeah? Has he, yeah? Why? No, I haven't. Um, and that actually opens it up, doesn't it? Robertson, Gomez, obviously Robertson injured. I don't know, like, Conor Bradley's been so exceptional on the right that if you want Trent in midfield for spells of games, where's he going to do it from? It's just... It's just getting him on the pitch at that point, aren't you? Yeah. Left back, in some manner. My word, if you got Conor Bradley and you got Trent and you got Endo and you got Sobsley and you got McAllister. Yeah. Like how the hell do you stop us? Yeah, you don't. Must okay. be a Jota back as well. Um, the um, yeah, it's interesting. It is, but my point on the Gomez stuff is, it just feels like this has just been his season, mm-hmm. and I worry, I worry for him being sort of pushed to the periphery a little bit because of Andy Robertson's experience and, and left foot, and the the and the Conor Bradley you know emerging to some extent. He can't score the league winning goal if he's not on the pitch. Is my is my general general point. Experience is the word on that. So yeah. the quality. In abundance, of course, world class operator, no two ways about it. Incredible servant, brilliant left back, etc., etc., etc. But the experience is what I think we're going to miss more than anything, and the leadership as well, a little bit as well over the coming weeks, however long he's out for. That's the bit. And that's not to say Gomez isn't experienced or isn't a good leader and all that sort of stuff, but someone like Andy Robbo, somebody of that caliber and that ilk, you can't not miss, yeah. regardless of form, in a way. Yeah, I, I said ever since. Robbo actually returned from injury that my first choice left back is Joe Gomez and it stayed that way and yeah. it's not going to change right now to be perfectly honest and a lot of people weren't happy with me for that but I, I think Joe Gomez has earned the shirt That's so. not a slight on Joe Gomez they're not happy though I think that's just more no, it, remembering Andy Robbo It's Andy Robbo, Andy Robbo yeah, yeah, yeah I totally get that but Joe Gomez has been exceptional the best left back in the world isn't he um, on his day um, what does that leave us then in terms of the bench thinking about it? So Jones, Gravenberg. Jones, Gravenberg, Charlie Elliott. Elliott. Gakpo. Gakpo. Probably a Bobby Clark on there, I would imagine. Timicast not named in Quanta. the eleven there. Quanta. Joel Quanta. It's getting better that, isn't it? It's getting yeah. much better that. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like that. Um 
what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Is there any wild uh, indifferences you feel there towards our starting 11? Do let us know. Um, don't forget to drop a like on this if you're listening on podcast and apps. Leave a five-star review as well. And yes, it doesn't really end. Normally, there's a there's a nice delineation between this and the, the bias, but obviously, we really want to talk more about Arsenal and Man City as well. So do come over to redmenplus.com uh, and sign up. We're going to go probably in about 10 minutes pretty much straight after this uh, doing bias football pods will head over there sign up and check that one out as well uh, guys thank you so much uh, and we'll see you so soon Ta-da. up the lads hey thank you so much for checking out the content today if you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people uh, then head to redmenplus.com join as a legend tier subscriber you're going to get free merchandise merchandise codes you're going to get in our discord and you're going to get your name at the end of youtube videos yes redmenplus.com legend tier status